this lecture we are going to learn about from event operator the from event operator allows us to create an observable from a dom event let's try to understand it practically and to understand that what i'm going to do is i'm going to write some html so basically i'll copy this html from here and i'll also comment it for now and let's write the same html here and from here let me remove this ng for directive let me also remove this string interpolation syntax and from this button let me remove this click event all right so here we have a div and we have a button if i save the changes if i go to the web page and once the page refresh it looks something like this okay now what i'll also do is instead of calling this button get data let's call it maybe create new item save the changes let's go back again and it looks something like this all right now let's learn how we can create an observable from a dom event so what we want is when this button is clicked it is going to emit an event it is going to emit click event right from that event we want to create an observable and for that we can use from event operator so the first thing which we need to do is in the component class we need to get access to this button element so on this button element let's specify a template reference variable let's call it create button and now we are going to use this template reference variable to access this button element in our component class for that let's create a property here let's simply call it as create button and i am going to decorate it with at view child decorator and in order to use this at view child decorator we also need to import it from angular slash co all right and to this we need to pass an argument here i'm going to pass the template reference variable name so we want to get access to this button element on that button element we have used this template reference variable so we are passing this template reference variable as an argument to this view child decorator and in this way this view child decorator it will assign a reference of this button element in the dom to this create button now this button it is going to be of type element ref because we know that this button it is going to store a reference of button element in the dom again in order to use this element ref we need to import it from angular slash co all right now here we have this error it says this create button has no initializer because we have not initialized this property with any value and i don't want to do it here so what i will do is i'll also go to tsconfig.json and there i'll set this strict mode to false and with that that error should be gone all right so now this create button property it is storing a reference to this button element in the dom now let's go ahead and let's create a method so in the bottom i'm going to create a method i'll call it button clicked you can call this method anything and inside this method what we want is the click event which will happen on this button element we want to convert it into an observable so for that here let's use from event operator and in order to use this from event operator we need to import it from rxjs okay and to this we need to pass two arguments the first argument will be the target element on which we want to listen to event in this case the target element will be this button element and we have a reference to this button element in this property in this create button property so from this reference we can get the button element in the dom so for that we can say this dot create button dot native element and it will give us this button element and the second argument will be the name of the event which we want to listen to here we want to listen to click event okay so these are the two arguments which we need to pass to this from event operator the first argument will be the target element and the second argument will be the event which we want to listen on that target element and this here it is going to return us an observable 
So using this from event method, we are creating an observable from an event. In this case, we are creating an observable from this click event. Now let's go ahead and let's create one more property which will store that observable. So here I'm going to create another property. I'll call it create button observable. You can again name it anything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the observable which this from event will return to that property. So let's say this dot create button OBS equals the observable which this from event method will return. Now here let's also go ahead and let's subscribe to that observable. So here itself I'll use this subscribe method. Okay and to this subscribe method let me move this code in the second line so that it will be more readable. Okay and to this subscribe method let's pass a callback function. So we have learned that the first callback function which we pass to the subscribe method it handles the data which the observable emits. Here let's simply go ahead and let's log the data in the console. So we know in this callback function we are going to receive the data which this observable will return. So let's simply call it as data and let's go ahead and let's log that data in the console. Let's save the changes. Now we need to call this method from somewhere so that when this method will be called an observable will be created from this click event on the button element and we will subscribe to that observable. So I'm going to call this method from ng after view init lifecycle hook because the ng after view init lifecycle hook will be called when the view of this component is fully initialized. So here let me go ahead and let me add ng after view init lifecycle hook. Okay, and in this lifecycle hook, we want to call this method, this button click method. Okay, and here we need to access this method using this keyword. All right, now since we are using this ng after view init lifecycle hook, it's a good practice to implement from its interface, the interface which provides this ng after view init lifecycle hook. So here for this app component class, I'm going to implement after view init and in order to use this after view init lifecycle hook we also need to import it from angular slash co. All right. So when the view will be fully initialized this button clicked event will be called and when this button clicked event will be called every time we will click on this button from that click event an observable will be created and we are subscribing to that observable. So whenever that button will be clicked it will log the event data. Let's see that in action. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me clear everything here and when I click on this create new button you see this pointer event has been logged here. If I expand this event you will see a lot of properties. Let me actually move it inside. Okay, so here you will see a lot of properties. You'll also see the target. So the target is button. If I expand this target there also, we have other properties. Okay, so you can make use of these properties in your program. Now here what I want is, when this button is clicked, I want to show a div here with the value item one. When this button is clicked again, I want to show another value item 2. When this button is clicked again, I want to show another div with value item 3 and so on. For that, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create one more method. Let's call it maybe show item. You can name it anything. And inside this show item method, what we want is, inside this div, we want to create a new div. For that, we are going to write some JavaScript code. So first we are going to access the document object. On that we have a method called create element. Now what element do we want to create? We want to create a div. Okay, so it will create a div inside this div. Then once the div is created, in that div we want to set some inner text. So for that 
let's first assign this value the div element which will be created using this create element to a variable let's call it div and then let's say div dot inner text and let's say we want to set it to item okay finally what we want is we want to add this div inside this div here we are creating the div we are setting some inner text for that div now we want to add this div inside this div for that on this div let's go ahead and let's add an id let's call it maybe container okay and let's access this div using its id so here again we will say document dot get element by id and to this let's pass the id name which is container so in this way using this line of javascript code we will have access to this div all right now in that div what we want to do we want to append a child element for that we will use this append child method and what child element do we want to append we want to append this div okay now when do we want to do all these things we want to do all these things when this button is clicked so we are going to call this show item method inside this callback function okay so here let's say show item and since it is a method we need to access it using this keyword with this if i save the changes if i go back to the web page let me clear everything now when i click on this create new item you see item has been added if i click again another item has been added if i click again another item has been added now in between these divs there should be some margin and padding but that is not there so let's go back to vs code and what we will do is on the div we will also add a css class so here what we are going to do is let's say div dot class name equals and on this div i want to add this css class i'll copy it from here and let me pass it here and from the outer div inside which we are creating that div let's remove this css class let's save the changes and now let's go back to web page let me clear the console here and when i click on this create new item the css style is not being applied here let's go to elements tag and there we have this app root inside that we have this div and here we have the container inside that you see this div is created dynamically and on that we have this css class data list but for some reason the css styles are not being applied here but anyway that is not our concern all right so when i click on this create new item you see one item has been added if i click again another item has been added if i click again another item has been added if i click again another item has been added okay so here every time the button is clicked it is streaming a data now what we want is instead of showing item we will show item 1 item 2 item 3 and like that so here before we create the observable let's create a count variable and initially let's set it to 0 okay and every time the button is clicked we want to pass count plus plus to this show item now currently this show item does not take any parameter so let's specify a parameter here let's call it well and now the inner text should be item plus well let's save the changes now let's go back to the web page and now every time i click on this create new item you see item 0 item 1 item 2 item 3 item 4 and so on now here we are using post increment operator so instead of using post increment operator let's use pre increment operator so that the counting will start from one save the changes let's go back to the web page so now every time i click on this create new item you will see item 1 item 2 item 3 item 4 item 5 item 6 and so on so now every time this button is being clicked that click event is streaming some data here you can see the data which it is streaming and every time the data is being streamed 
we are displaying some value in the UI. Now, this is a very simple example which shows how we can convert an event into an observable. Here, we have converted the click event on the button element into an observable using this from event operator. Now here I could not think of any real world example. So I went with this simple example to show you how we can convert an event to an observable using this from event operator. But if you have any use case in mind, you can let me know and I'll create a video on that explaining how we can use the observable which we create from an event into a real world scenario. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.